Exactly 40 years ago this year, a car was launched that would change everything. An executive motor that would set a new gold standard for passenger safety, reliability, build quality. A car for the well-heeled discerning driver. A car with understated style. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the Mercedes-Benz W123. I'm going to make a very bold statement now, but I think this is the perfect classic that you can buy and stick on your driveway today. A motoring icon that you can buy and run on a realistic budget. Prices are only going one way, and savvy Carfection viewers might want to put their pension pots into one of these. Now, I think this is the best classic that you can buy for three very good reasons, which I'll get to in a minute. But before then, a little history lesson. You see, there was a time throughout the 60s and early 70s when it seemed like half the world was ruled by a motley collection of desk pots, crack pots and toss pots, usually from the back seat of a big, chauffeur-driven Mercedes-Benz. Scores of top-drawn nutters including Idi Amin, Robert Mugabe, Papa Doc Duvalier all loved their big stretched Mercs, especially the humongous 600 Grocer. Big Mercedes were the chariot of choice for dictators like Tito, Pol Pot, Ceausescu, Kim Jong-il and even Saddam Hussein owned one. Several royal households kept 600 grocers, as did the king of rock and roll, Mr Elvis Presley. Even Colombia's self-proclaimed king of cocaine, Pablo Escobar, owned a stretched Merc 600 limo in which he survived more than one assassination attempt thanks to the Big Benz's bomb-proof build quality. It's probably fair to assume that if there'd ever been a well-attended grocer owner's meet back in the 1970s, it would have made Spectre HQ look like a Quaker meeting house. So while the 600 grocer was ferrying around world leaders and the uber wealthy, the Western world's captains of industry, the doctors, the barristers, the diplomats, the chief executives were looking for something more compact. Something that still had that whiff of Mercedes-Benz cachet, but didn't make them look like a low-rent Bond villain. Turns out the car they were waiting for was this. Launched in 1976, the new mid-sized executive saloon played its safe design-wise, carrying over styling cues from its bigger brother. But the W123 was much, much more than a cut-price grocer for the masses. Passenger safety was one of the W123's key selling points, with a super strong passenger cell, side impact bars, crumple zones, driver's airbag and a collapsible steering column. Born out of relentless crash testing at its German facilities, a Mercedes obsessive desire to build a world leading automobile. Of course, the W123's pioneering use of ABS coupled with double wishbone suspension and servo-assisted disc brakes were all intended to protect your precious investment and stop you from crashing in the first place. Despite the high list price, this car was an instant success. In West Germany, eager buyers had to wait at least 12 months at the local dealers to get their hands on one. In fact, people were prepared to pay a 5,000 Deutschmarks, about £2,000 premium, just to get their hands on one by buying a lightly used second-hand one from local wheeler dealers. In fact, German buyers were so desperate to get their hands on one of these that there were stories of, of people loitering outside the main gates of the Mercedes-Benz factories and actually harassing workers as they came out to see if they would sell them their own cars because workers had been allowed to put in early orders. So here are my three main reasons why I think this is the perfect classic. So it's safe, it has a big boot, room for five, decent MPG, well, apart from this one, the 2.8 litre, which admittedly is the one that you'll want. But there is a super frugal diesel that hundreds of cheapskates have run for decades on waste chip fat. But most importantly, it's uber reliable. So how is this car 40 years on? Can it keep up with modern traffic? Well, it sort of depends which one you go for. The two litre diesel, the 200D, only has 54 brake horsepower to haul around this 1.6 tonnes of grade A German engineering. So let's leave that one to one side. This is the range topping 280 CE, which had 175 and even 185 in some of the later models. Now that might not sound like a huge amount today, but in 1976, well, let's put it into perspective, the MGB still couldn't make 100 brake horsepower. 
The new Golf GTI had 110, and even the entry-level Porsche 911 2.7 litre only coughed up 150. But anyway, all of that is irrelevant, because today, even a mid-range diesel saloon will smoke a so-called sports car from the 70s and 80s. So what's the point? Just relax and enjoy your classic. I'm not going to talk about anything as vulgar as 0-60 sprints or Nürburgring lap times. If you want something for straight line speed and you've got no soul, go buy a Subaru. Over the last 116 years, Mercedes-Benz have won pretty much everything there is to win in motorsport. Targa Florio, Mille Miglia, the Le Mans 24 hours and of course Formula One. But I bet you didn't know that the Mercedes-Benz W123 also has a rallying pedigree. Obviously the W123 was never going to become a sprightly lightweight sports car, but it was a rugged and dependable workhorse, ideally suited to long distance endurance rallying, where strength and reliability were far more important than outright speed. The 280E was duly homologated by the FIA as a fairly standard Group 2 rally car before its rallying debut in the epic 1977 London to Sydney Marathon. This 30,000 km enduro threaded its way between 30 checkpoints spread across three continents over 30 days and remains to this day the longest car rally in motorsport history. The following year, at the East Africa Rally, against all the odds, the 280E shocked the Motor Impress by taking first and second places overall, with all four crews finishing in the top eight. Don't get me wrong, this car is a wafter, it's no Porsche beater, but this car has done 135,000 miles, it's been around the world five and a half times, and it's not a concourse car by any stretch of the imagination, I think it was about £7,000. But this car just feels still incredibly well put together. It feels really solid. It feels very Germanic. Really, it's one of my favourite cars. I absolutely love it. But there is one more very good reason why I think this is the perfect classic. Mercedes-Benz is a blue chip brand. That three-pointed star up front is one of the world's most recognisable status symbols. And like most designer labels, it was reassuringly expensive. When this was launched, it cost £12,000 without any toys in poverty spec. That was about the same price as a three-bedroom semi-detached house. If you want celebrity endorsements, well, the Queen Mother had a W123, as did John Lennon and Yoko Ono. And in fact, it's probably no surprise that a W123 also had a starring role in the recent Mad Max film, because come the nuclear apocalypse, as we all know, there will only be two things moving afterwards, and that's cockroaches and old Mercedes. It doesn't actually feel like it has 175 bhp, if I'm completely honest. I suppose a lot of that power is sucked away by this rather sluggish three-speed auto. Well, it's four-speed, but the first one is only in low, so by the time you get it up to speed, it is screaming a little bit, shall we say. And it's got a straight six. It's not the <laughs> nicest sounding straight six. It's very tappity. Apparently, they were like that from new. And it's very soft. It's got 14-inch alloy wheels and 70 profile tyres. So it, it soaks up everything. It soaks up all the lumps and bumps. But you wouldn't really want to be taking on the Stelvio Pass, shall we say, in one of these at 10 tenths. But this car does everything. It's relaxed. It's got power. It can keep up with modern traffic. It turns heads. And as soon as we pull over, everyone's sort of saying, well, they always know somebody who's had one or they've had one in the past or there's some sort of anecdote that they're desperate to tell us. It's a car that makes people smile. This thing is an absolute doddle to drive, you know, compared to, say, an old MGB or even a Mini. There's no comparison. This thing just goes on and on and on. It's comfortable. You can drive it all day. This is a classic that just doesn't sit in the garage gathering dust. It's a car you can actually properly use. When you think of Volkswagens, you think of the Beetle. When you think of Fiat, you may think of the Fiat 500. When you think of Mercedes-Benz, you think of the W123. It's the most recognisable Mercedes-Benz silhouette. It's the iconic Benz. So there you are then. 
Three good reasons why you should be scouring the small ads to make the Mercedes-Benz W123 your next classic. Reliability, motorsport heritage and an air of sophistication. It may well be the only car you'll ever need.